Okay, so what we have today, we have a special guest. Her name, I mean, I don't want to say her name. She don't want her name to be said, but she can say it for My herself. Name is Journey. Okay, yeah, her name is Journey. And we'll be talking about, you said you wanted to talk about black love. And is yeah. it real? Okay, so I'll start the conversation off by saying I do believe that it's possible, but there's so many complications and I want you to just like shoot some questions my way about you know anything about you know this t particular subject and I'll, I'll answer them. So this was I guess kind of recent but you I think it was like a video about Cardi B and you seemed like really exasperated and you were saying like it kind of seemed like you were saying you lost hope in like black females because of how they were reacting to her. Yes. Uh, I felt bad. I was like, dang, I mean, it's hard out here. Like, when you're a real one, it's really hard to find, like, other real ones. And it's just, like, uh, it's hard for the girls and it's hard for the guys. Most so, definitely. like, what is your, where are you at right now with that? I still feel as if, like, the whole Cardi B situation, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that particular subject it like resonates it's like you know i'm sure females have those moments where they see men going in on black women and you see a whole bunch of black men like agreeing with certain things like oh these black women ain't this and that i understand it but for the men we see things like this lady clearly said calling brown skin to dark skin women cockroaches and you know burnt cockroaches and all that to see brown to dark skin women agreeing with it and supporting her and her ratchet behavior, which is really appropriating how they've been acting and being bashed for for decades now, it's like it's like the you know when I talk about the self hate, it's not that it's particular like with a woman that I you know see myself with, but it's like for the community. If you have a child in this world and she's subject to being around children with these mothers with these mindsets, then that you know it, it contaminates your child. But that's why I stress for people to really like understand the people that you put your children around and they influence the child as well to those behaviors that they'll think is cool because they see a whole community doing it. So that's why I felt, you know, a certain way about it, because I see the bigger picture behind it. It's not just that um, the women that you see potentially as mates or as, you know, marriage material, things like that. It's just the the further down the line thing because we want our people to be strong we want our people to to understand things and have self pride but yet if you um agreeing with someone who doesn't like you you know what i'm saying and you supporting them then it it's like a it, it messes with your mind like nah you know but i do understand you know overall you know. yeah i mean i share in the same frustration like recently i was talking to my friend about her and she was saying how, um, like, how she was twerking at Coachella, and she was like, yeah, that's really ratchet. And she's a fan of her, but even she had to admit, like, that's really uncalled for. And I was like, yeah, well, that's your girl. And she was like, why are you saying she's my girl? And I was like, because, like, you support, like, you in the beginning, like, you support her, you were a fan of her. And he's, she's trashy. And she was like, well, I support her because she's herself. And I'm just like, that's not a reason like that like someone being themselves like yeah i mean you should be yourself but that's not something to praise up or prop up or anything and like i was calling her trashy and she told me i sounded prude and i'm just like i think that's where the ignorance comes in because it's like you don't understand how like how serious this is like media is mind control and like it's ridiculous that you're considered a conspiracy theorist if you say that it's the truth like yeah. it's important that we don't subject ourselves to that kind of thing and our people just don't want to understand that for some reason it's, it's really ridiculous I totally agree and the thing about Cardi B is that people that support her they only support her because what you realize is that a majority of the people that agree with those mentalities are people that follow the mainstream and the mainstream is really just a connection with, you know, the Jewish mindset and what they want people to be programmed with. So that's a like an off branch of them and their agendas. So saying that Cardi B is being herself, 
it's really nothing to you know praise at all because there have been black women that have tried to act like her and they get bashed to death by black men by black women by the white media you know they shun them but now you know you have this pale hispanic up here saying all of this ratchet thing you i don't know if you remember my video where i did the new generation hold this l part 10 it was called thotty woods and uh thotty wood and me go and no 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 industry goes you know it was really cardi b and me goes and i did a whole complication of every clip from cardi b saying something foul about black men seeing them as like you know as as duels she said the hispanic duels she go to you know if she cheat on them they beat her ass but she said if the black man she you know she cheat on them they don't give a fuck you know they'll be like all right so what I you trying I'm to do today hmm what you say I said, I think I did hear that. Yeah, it's a 15 second yeah. clip when she was doing her little vines and stuff back in like 2014. But it got flagged down and all of that. But it just resonated with me like, okay, so people are still supporting this. She's up on Jimmy Kimmel Live. She got videos exposing her breasts in the strip, not even in the strip club, like just recently, like what, two, three months ago, exposing her breasts in the club. And it went, you know what I'm saying? It went under the radar and, you know, people support it. It's like, it's, it's it's a total double standard, especially seeing how people are bashing Nicki Minaj, which I don't agree with at all. I really want to talk about something with Nicki Minaj, but, you know. Yeah. Oh, I just watched um, Chun-Li and Barbie Tings or whatever. <laughs> you know what's funny about that song? When I first heard the audio, she said, I I, I just bagged a white guy. I was like. <laughs> I, is anyone here? It's like, how is it like, that's what I'm saying, like mainstream like the people who have the mainstream mindset it's just like if one person says it it's okay if another person says it it's not okay but everyone thinks they're woke everyone thinks they're for the people everyone thinks they're part of this movement and it's like y'all are crazy like yeah a majority of them a majority of them that claim to be woke you know as i've always said they follow the trends like for instance i'm gonna talk about this kanye situation like two three days ago two days ago if you go to a comment section on a video about them talking about Kanye, everybody's bashing him. Everybody's immediately saying this and that, going straight off of emotion and how he's ignorant and an idiot. But now if you go like yesterday, a video uploaded from TMZ or somebody talking about it, now people are starting, you know, you read the comment section, it's overwhelmingly people supporting Kanye, black people saying how people are scared of the truth and all of this. Well, that's because after a couple of days, people stop following the trend because as usual people you know they jump to conclusions and they support things because it's a trend it's a wave yet they see other people doing it and then as a couple days go by you know the the, the so-called hate for Kanye goes away because they really didn't feel that emotional about it they were just following they, the trend they really don't hmm? they, I said they really don't they don't think and Kanye like if people really thought Kanye was a coon. He would have been canceled a long time ago. Like, it shouldn't just be occurring to everyone that Kanye is a coon. Like, mm -hmm. and there's see, been signs before this. And see, the thing about it is, is that, as I've said in, in other videos, if people really did feel that type of way, then, you know, um, they would have said something when he got with Car Kim Kardashian. They, he would have, they would have stopped listening in. You know, and I've seen people, I've seen young black men talk about they <laughs> done. These are the same people and the same women who support Kim Kardashian. Uh, that's what so I'm saying. Like, you can't, you can't, there's no, like, talking to them. I don't know. Is this is, I, I, I've always said this. Black women have a love-hate relationship with the, with the Kardashians. You know, one minute they call them cultural appropriators. Next thing you know, they buying their makeup lines. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, what's, what's up with y'all? You know, y'all watch they show. Actually, if you look at it, a majority of Kim Kardashian's friends are black women. I think what Sierra is her friend. Um, I, I'm not sure, but I think Monica is one. And um, they have um, in the Kim Kardashian, you know, their clan, they have that little, those two twin black sisters down there that you know they always cool with. So you know, I know what's up. You know, they can front on here all they want, but I know what it is. So you know, it's people like are fake. Some really strange strand of like cogn cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. like they can love and hate her at the same time yeah it's it's a fascination just like they have a fascination with melanated people you know it's this is what i talk about with the yin and the yang of society you know um black women are supporting them but hating them 
but yet um, Kim Kardashian, they're su- they're not supporting black people, but you know they're supporting the black men. But at the same time, they're appropriating black urban culture. You know they've been known for stealing um, styles from um, black designers, low you know what I'm saying unknown black designers, and putting it as their own clothing branding, making money off of it. So you know they're paying attention to the black women's urban style, but at the same time they're not acknowledging them. All of them are. All they do is sit on Instagram, take notes, and they put it in their music, and they put it in their fashion, and they put it in their visuals. And it's like we created everything, all everything that you that you do, and they just sell it back to us. Mm-hmm. And the Kardashians do it because they can. Yeah, and because once again the people allow it. As I've always said, to call Kanye canceled, they can't cancel him. This ain't even the worst thing he said, if you ask me. I mean, it's not, you know, uh, it's not the most controversial thing he said, but it gets people up in arms because a lot of black people feel some type of weight about slavery. But they look at it, see, a majority of black people, they look at it as a weakness. They get scared when you mention slaves because they see it as a weakness in their people. But as seeing it as a weakness, they don't even understand their real history. You have the Gullah Wars, you have the Seminole Wars, you have the revolts in Louisiana, the revolts in New York City, where black people, you know, actually won. And you have abolitionists along with black people. You had, like, everybody that says, you know, their ancestors, this and that. I can go back to my ancestors being a free man, you feel me? Like a free black man in the 1600s. So... Everybody doesn't have slaves as they, you know, as they, um, people, but a majority of people like to tend to believe that, oh, you not, you shouldn't say this because of this, and that your answer to this. You got to understand, if there's people in the house, I've always said this, they didn't fear the black people physically. No, no, they didn't fear them mentally, is what I mean to say. They see them physically. You can be looking like the black Terminator, and they didn't fear you as a black man. Because of your mindset, they had them mentally whipped. They put house niggas in the house with knives. They messing with axes. They chopping wood. They burning fire, bringing it to the. What movie was that where he was shaving the master's um neck and he just? I forgot what movie that was. Was it Django? What was it Django? I don't know. I don't watch slave movies. <laughs> That's why I can't remember like what it was. But he was. It might have been the color. Nah. Mm-hmm. That the color purple is when they was uh, doing the dad, like right? Wasn't they cutting the dad? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that wasn't a white guy. That was the wrong example. Then. Yeah, <laughs> but you know the the mindset of that movie is to put the black man in the same mindset as that, to where women yeah. see it like that, as you know the black man being the enemy. So you know, I, you know, it, it was propaganda with that movie too. But yeah, I understand. <laughs> too many slave movies to try to you know try to put yeah, that. Yeah, it's really ignorant and. I think another part of that is that we really don't understand like what slavery, like how you said mentally, what it did to us because we were abused to the point where we like when you're mentally scarred from all the horrible things that they did to us, you can't function like you're not going to be okay. And we never got to address all the trauma that we've been through and, you know, like it goes, it spreads through generations. So we, yeah. we're we still those people and we still never dealt with all of our issues. And we're really strong to even still be here today. And I think that's why slavery proves that we are amazing and we shouldn't see it as like- A weakness. We should respect what happened to us, but we shouldn't see it as shameful. Yeah. I mean, we should see it as shameful as the acts were done, but you know, it's shame, it should, it- it's shameful in the in the sense of it shouldn't have lasted that long. It shouldn't have. You know, the slave the slave masters, quote unquote masters, and their people were outnumbered like a motherfucker. And to see that, you know, they would had controlled some slave owners had seven people in the household and controlled three hundred slaves. You know? So with numbers like that going on, it's like, man, come on now, bro. Come on now, man. Somebody got to, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got, you got mammy in there breastfeeding the white children. You feel me? You got house nigga in there. That's, that's where the trauma comes in. Like, yeah. the things that they were really doing, and I'm like not trying to be graphic on your podcast, but the things that they were really doing, we never been taught about it in school. So it's like, it just seems like, oh, they whipped you and that's why you were scared. Like, no, they were doing some like degenerate mm-hmm. horrible like unspeakable stuff to these people and so but i'm gonna mention something on here i'm gonna mention something on here i know a lot about slavery and history so i just want to say that 
what what you're about to speak about or what you were you know alluding to you got to understand that a majority of those people that own slaves were jewish and they run off of this thing as they do now um the kabbalah and the talmud and a lot of those things um permit for people to treat people any type of way so a lot of those things like the kkk is a branch of freemasonry and that's ritualistic in its nature. So if they're castrating people, if they're raping people, if they're feeding babies to alligators and, um, you know, whipping people, they're doing all of this for energy consumption. And they see them as goyim, the same words that they use today. The things that they use, they call, you know, the Jewish individuals call people goyim and they call them Gentiles. That's to separate themselves from, you know, um, some type of some type of um, mentality to where they see them as equal. So a lot of the things that went on in slavery were done in ritualistic fashion. A lot of people don't understand that, and that's because they don't see them as human. They see us as animals. And I can even go even further into detail with that. You know the monster can, the energy drink. Yeah. Yeah. The um, it has three valves on it. You know those three symbols. Isn't it like the beast, like the six six six? Yeah. You know. All right. Yeah. The valve. Yeah. The it's a Jewish um symbol. A Jewish number called Vav, and you know that six six six, and they have us drink it and say unleash the beast, which is really they call us the beast, and that's why in the Bible, the Bible, all of those books, the Talmud, Kabbalah, um, you know, um, the product, uh, God damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, I'm fucking up. I can't think of the name of it at the time, but a certain book and the Bible and um also the Islamic faith all enter interline itself with the same mentality of seeing the people as goyim and a lot of people don't understand that it's it's from a jewish perspective of them worshiping saturn so when they speak they're speaking to themselves they're speaking to their people when it says slaves obey your masters in the bible that's what they're talking about they're telling the people like look you have to you know do this and that's why right. hmm? bible. say it i'm sorry right or right under it's, 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 yeah, it's messing up. Go ahead, say what you're saying now. I think it's good now. It says that slave slave masters are to treat their slaves how they would want to be treated, and I would just disagree that. Sorry, I would just disagree that the Bible is in alignment with these things because what I'm learning is that the whole point of Jesus coming back was to show was to be an example to the jewish people and when he came back they still didn't and so because they turned away from god i think that's the jews that we're dealing with today you think jesus is an actual person person that lived on earth yep okay i do and i didn't believe that like a month ago okay so what was the change <laughs> what was the change the change, um, I don't know, it's like a long story. Do you want to? Um, you can't shorten it up? Like, what was it, fear? Did it have something to do with fear? No, it didn't have anything to do with fear. It just had to do with life changes mm -hmm. and just really trying to find the truth. Okay. So I'm just going to ask you this. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm just trying to make you think, of course. So for individuals to be in this position of power, you know, um, running things, you said the same people running it since the beginning. I agree with that. Those Jewish individuals, history has shown that when you look at their moves. But you believe that, you know, they're doing all of these things. A lot of the other things that happen as well as, you know, um, child sex trafficking, um, missing kids being sacrificed things like that so these people are doing all of this knowing that jesus is coming back and you believe that they are going to uh a, a pit like you know a, an eternal fire you feel me like a fire forever and they're knowing this and they're knowing that you know jesus is, is real and they're still doing this you, you believe that i'm just asking um i don't like i feel like when it comes to stuff like that like specific groups i don't claim to really know what they believe but I like for I don't claim to know what they believe but could you repeat that question I'm sorry 
I was saying that, you know, people murdering children, raping children, using them as sacrifices, and, you know, those people in, like, let's say, for instance, the papacy, you know, that's just one example, the Vatican, those people up there, the Pope, the Gray Pope, White Pope, and Black Pope, are in those positions of power, knowing that, you know, Jesus is supposed to be coming back soon. They're doing all of this with these Vatican books, with these Bibles in front of them, and they believe that, you know, um, they're doing wrong and they're going to burn forever in the pit of... Uh, the everlasting fire, that's what it's called, the everlasting fire, when uh, Jesus comes back as, you know, being revealed in Revelation. So I'm asking you, you believe that they're doing all of this knowing that Jesus is coming back and that they will be, um, you know, like it's prophecy that they will, you know, be burning in the everlasting fire. That's what I'm saying. Well, a lot of those different groups that you named, they don't believe that, well, the Jews don't believe that Jesus came. And so they're waiting for him to come still. And then other people, I don't know what they believe, but like, like for example, how celebrities like sell their soul, like they have to know that they're going to hell, but they do it anyway. And I can't even fathom that. Like, why would you sell your soul now just to know that when you die, it's over for you? Like. I don't know why anybody would do that, but people do it all the time. So I think it's a mixture of people not believing that Jesus is going to come, people who don't believe that, people who believe in moral relativism, like they feel like they're God and they can do whatever they want. And it's just a mixture of a lot of different things. Okay. So with Jesus coming back, you know that that had a lot of the black slaves in complacency with their situation because they felt that their suffering was due to the fact that they had to do that. And especially with Deuteronomy 28, which, you know, permitted the, the treatment of slaves and, you know, putting them in bondage, which also has been proven to be from the King James book only. And anything before that, there was no mention of black slaves being in bondage or being cursed. So a lot of the things that you're mentioning from the Bible, especially with, you know, Jesus coming back, had people, uh, our black people, stuck in situations. It was probably a, a majority of the time situations where there was a black slave or, you know, a mammy in the house with knives around her and master in there in the living room watching a fire with all his children. And she could, you know, t end it all right now and, and everybody free. But yet in her mind, she's thinking, I got to be good. You know, the Ten Commandments says thou shalt not murder, you know, um, you know, um, God is coming back. Jesus is coming back to save us. So I can't thou shalt not. I got to follow the commandments. So that's what, you know, a lot of situations to where. Their, their babies are getting raped by slave master and all of those people. You know, their children are being fed to alligators and hung and castrated, men being whipped, all of that going on. So those positions of, you know, being in, in um, that, that action is all permitted because of the Bible and, you know, them being taught that a majority of the time. Um, go ahead. You can talk. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say that the Bible permits that because the biblical definition of witchcraft is to manipulate something to control so you can manipulate the bible to control people you can people can be manipulative and that is what the bible will call a witch you don't have to necessarily do a ritual or do anything like that to be a witch you just have to have that spirit of control and trying to manipulate people to to get what you want and to fulfill your will so i feel like the same could be said for the white slave masters who claim to be Christian. How can you be a Christian and do and enslave people in that manner? You can't. So they were using a Bible to manipulate people. And I think that that's a form of witchcraft and a form of witchcraft that we're still under because like I said, the Bible, the Bible says a lot of stuff that you would not know unless you read it yourself. And people don't read the Bible and I'm beginning to read the Bible and I'm beginning to see that the Bible does make sense. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm going to say this. So did you not just hear me um, take the quote from the Bible slaves obey your masters? They're telling the slaves to obey their masters. Basically. And they're... right below it is the slaves. You need, I mean, slave masters, you need to treat your slaves well because you're not above them. I don't promote slavery at all. I don't think no man should be enslaved at all, regardless of situations of anything. I don't think people should be slaves. I don't think, especially 
you know, being born into it. I don't agree with it at all. That's all I'm saying. I, you know, no well, book working, can change. I mean, working in slavery is really the same thing. Like back in the day, you were supposed to, you weren't supposed to keep your slaves forever. You were supposed to give them, they were basically working to at some point get out of slavery. And it's kind of like working today. Like you're working for money, but you're still supposed to be obedient to your bosses. Like that's how I see it. I, I understand. I understand. <sighs> I, I where you were like a month ago. I'm telling you. You can't. You you can't let them change your mind like that. Especially, wow. That's that's. Who's them? Uh, huh? Who's them? I mean, wh whoever. I mean, the book. You have to do. I, I see you. You have to do more research. I can get on here and and you know really break it down. Especially when you said that the book. You know, um, how people are still under the witchcraft, and you talked about the whites being Christians. A lot of them weren't Christian. A lot of them were Jewish, and they follow Judaism, and that's Jewish religion. And they have these two books called the Talmud and the Kabbalah. Which the Kabbalah is a book of witchcraft, which they follow, and the Talmud permits them to treat slaves in a horrible manner. They tell them to treat slaves foul, so that's why it happened like that. And a lot of them, when you follow history, they were doing trade with Moors, which is the Muslims down there in North Africa, Berber, Moorish, Moroccan, those nations over there. So it's Islamic and Judaism under the disguise of Christianity. As we know, the Arabs had more slaves than the quote-unquote Americas down here. They had way more slaves. More slaves were traded to Brazil under the disguise of Jesuits as well. A dude named Lopez, you had him down there, but he was a Jew as well. It's a lot of things that people don't know. I just did a video on it too, like yesterday, you know, so. But, yeah, I just, I can't, I can't get with it. Religion is a form of control. I'm sorry to tell you, sis, you know. But, you know, um, I, I've broken down the etymology of hell and all of that. It's a form of control. You will be scared to do things. You have to understand that you, if you give your power to Jesus, which you, you know what I'm saying, you give your power to Jesus, that's outside of yourself. So you're waiting on him to do something for you. You believe in manifest destiny, I don't know if you do, or, you know, having the power to control your own reality, then you would have to look within yourself and not look for Jesus, which, ha what has he done for you? What has he done when the slaves were praying to him? You know what I'm saying? When the slaves were praying to him in the 1600s, praying to be free, whole family sitting down in Sunday church rooms that the, slave, that the slave masters allowed them to sit down in. And they were praying for freedom, this, you know, for their, their people to be free and liberated. It never happened. 200 years later, it's still happening. You feel me? It took until the Seminoles, who don't believe in Jesus, to go around killing slave owners and slave masters for them to get free so that's that's how that happened it, it didn't take jesus the seminole the black seminoles down there in florida you know and you know i, I just i just can't get, agree with this sis. i'm sorry i'm not trying to get you to get with anything I'm, i know i'm telling you what i believe i know i know i know but you know it's a podcast so i'm letting others fit you know what i'm saying but yeah you you should definitely you know check out this video once it's uploaded but um okay yeah so any other questions i understand your take on religion but you don't think that you know what 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 good is the church in the bible what has it done for the black community today we have churches all throughout okay. black communities hmm? i was saying we have churches all throughout I, I was saying we have churches all throughout the black communities on every street corner in my hood You didn't hear what I said, like, you know, I said, what good is the black church in the, in the community? Like, what has he done for the black community? Well, so, okay, so the Bible says that people, there are certain people who just don't want to understand or choose not to understand for whatever reason. And I feel like the Bible is something that you have to come to with the right intention, but only you can, only you can know when what your intention is so it's been used to ruin the black community but i feel like if the people were really looking for god and not to human beings 
in the situation they're in, they would read the Bible and they would see that a lot of these preachers out here are not preaching the word. And that's what I've been, that's what I've been seeing. Like in the Bible, like I think one of the first times I opened the Bible, it says that you're not supposed to speak in tongues and in company with other people because there needs to be someone there to translate what's being said. Because if you're just running around screaming, it's disorderly. God is a God of order. Nobody is, is going to be helped by that. So there's just so many. You can go to any black church and they're running around. They're, they're talking in tongues. The preacher is preaching prosperity gospel, which is not the gospel at all. And God says that he will give the people the teachers that they look for. So if you're going to church and you by someone who is saying, give me your money, give me your money and plant a seed and you'll get, you know, you'll get the life that you want now. That's not, that's not biblical. So it's just a product of what the people want. Okay. That's what I feel. Okay. So do you know the etymology behind the word gospel? Do you know what it means? Oh, it's God's spell. God's spell. And also, when you mentioned that um, individuals were looking for another person, you know, instead of God, well, I just want to say that I believe that individuals should look within themselves instead of looking for another person or God, you know. And that's the problem I have with the community today. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about the black community. I'm talking about the world. If people really want to change out here, then it can happen. If everybody stopped going to work tomorrow, then this system would crash and people would be able to live the life they really wanted to. So with people still complying with the system, all of these individuals that we're talking about in the black community, they still, you know, for those that stick around in that black church, I really want to break down the etymology of church. I will. Church. The word comes from the word, the Greek word, kirk, which comes from a word named Circe, which is a Greek goddess. So when you enter church, you're entering a Greek goddess, Circe, which is a woman. So that's pagan within the church. But is anybody saying something about that? No, you, you probably never heard of that. But that's the etymology for it, and I'm not on here lying about that. Something I've researched. And it's also a ton of other things. For the name Jesus has the same story as the Egyptian sun god Horus. We know of that. I mean, you know, but... For the black community to be following things like that, I feel as if, you know, we are a lost people. We are very lost people. We don't have our culture. We weren't Christian when we came on these boats. Other people would try to push for the Igbo tribe in West Africa, but that's just one tribe. And also, we have a dozen tribes down here in America. And also in North Africa and West Africa during, you know, the, the um, times of the Wall of Benin and the Great Wall of Benin down there. We have a lot of history. And it doesn't come to Christianity. So when I see people following that, I just tend to believe that they have failed to do research when it comes to their own history before they dwell into what has been put in front of them. But think about it again. It's You don't have to... I'm not saying that you need to be Christian to come to that conclusion because if you... Before, before I came to Christianity, I was on the same wave that you were just in terms of we live... The way we're living is ridiculous and we need to change it but that's something that you have to want you have to seek that knowledge and you you have to realize that something's wrong and you have to want to understand what's going on and people don't either they don't want to or they can't and so that's just is what it is it's not anything that it's just it has to do with the people it's the people yeah yeah it is the people i agree with that so um uh I, I don't know i don't know i mean i i don't know what to say we I, just i thought this so what you want to do <laughs> i don't know what to say anymore I, I i didn't expect this i didn't expect this you threw me for a loop but, um, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm glad I'm speechless. I feel like accomplished. I feel honored. 
to have me speechless. Yep. Uh. <laughs> hey, you you the first one, I guess. You know, you the first one on this podcast to do that. So, you know, <laughs> this is crazy. You know, I, I wish you the best, sis. When it comes to your, you know, your belief in, you know, Christianity and Jesus coming back. I wish you the best, sis. You know, you know, people in World War One and World War Two, when they were being bombed and put in, you know, concentration camps, they were begging. They were thought thought it was the end of the world, too. They had more signs of it being the end of the world than we do now in America. They had, you know, bombs being bombed on them, people being put in concentration camps. Joseph Stalin killed 30 million people. It was a lot of stuff going on. It was a lot of war, so they thought it was the end of the world. But did it happen? No, nah, it didn't. Jesus didn't come back for them either. So, you know... Uh, you know, I wish you the best on your, you know, your your journey. Uh, uh, oh, journey. No pun intended. Pun intended. Your journey with Christianity. You know. I, and I'll be praying for you. Hmm? And I'll be praying for you. Mm-hmm. You know that, I would say pray, but you know praying means like, you know, you hunting an animal down. So, you know, it's like you see me. You, you said going, praying it's like you, you know, uh, you know. There's a double meaning to those words that we use, and that's the trickery of, you know, the spells. Like that's the English language, though. Hmm. I feel like that's the English language, though. Engl- English language is a curse. Yeah, it's a very deceptive language. Yep, the Bible was translated in English. Yeah, the Bible wasn't written in English, though. I know. And English is relatively new language. Mm-hmm. It was created. For the sole purpose of being a spell and that's why they push it all across the globe other than you know english is you know competing with the other language of mandarin in china that's the only thing it's competing with you know just because china has so many other people but they've been pushing english on people because of the spells it casts like we use spelling and you know when you write in cursive those are spelling and curse words so you know it's witchcraft every time we use a meaning for one of these words and you know and that's what I talk about with the Bible and just words in general they're used for casting spells so when I want my you know following to understand that when they read the Bible and see that something is quote-unquote prophecy and that it's came true now that's because of manifest destiny that's because people read it and they accept it and they need our minds to you know um, relate that to reality so it does come true they need for the people to accept that it's written down and that it's true. So they have to, you know, make it make it an acceptance in our mind for it to become a reality. If we deny it, be like, nah, it's not true, then it won't happen. So, you know, I just want the people to realize that the power is in our minds. It's not in, you know, any other thing, but the power is in our brains. I just want them to know. But that. if you're saying that, how, like how you were saying with the Holocaust, if they really believed, like how the Jews really believed... If I pray, someone will come for me, and it was a group of them doing that. How come someone didn't come for them? Because it's not real. They were praying on something that's not real. But you're saying, like, if we just don't accept it, it won't happen. Then you're saying, if you accept it, I'm talking it, about it the words happen. in the book. I'm talking about the words in that book. The Bible. In the Bible, specifically? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't work outside of the Bible? I'm saying... That when you read something in a book and it says father will turn against child and child will turn against father and mother will turn against daughter and daughter will turn against mother. People will be like, that's happening now. And then when they push their agenda, the Jews do feminism to push man against woman, you know, or just, you know, um, rights movements to push man against woman and all of those things, now the people have accepted it because they see it in their Bible, and then it manifests because the people have accepted it. It's just like with all of the propaganda you see now. If they're trying to push transgender things on people, if they're trying to push the transgender... Why are the Jews doing it then? Like, why the Jew- are they doing See, look, stuff? I'm going to tell you something about World War II a lot of people don't know. The people that were put into those inter- those um, you know um, camps, those, you know, Auschwitz and all of that, those were non-Protestant Jews. And on the other side of it were Zionist Jews. Zionist Jews were the ones that were telling them, like, look, Jesus is not coming back. And that was because they were trying to invade Israel and take over that property, you know, that whole territory with Palestine over there. 
they went to go take it over. And that was like 1947. If Correct me if I'm wrong for the people in the comment section. But that was done. And the, the non-Protestant Jews believed in Jesus. So they said, you know, we're going to show y'all. Because they put them into, into, yeah, they used Hitler as a pawn, who was a Jew himself, just like Joseph Stalin was a Jew himself. War is about ritualistic killing. That's all it was, about energy, energy harnessing. That's all it's about, and they got their agenda done as well. They got their territory in, in Israel and took it from the Palestinians. They, the, you, you know, look, the non-Protestant Jews were following it like the Bible. They were following, you know, um, that Jesus was going to come. Sorry. Uh, all right, so they were following it like Jesus was supposed to come back and take over Israel. And, you know, he was going to come down from the sky and do it that way. But the Jews said, look, we're going to do this our way. We're going to go in here, bring our military through. They tore shit down and they took it over. So that's a prophecy that proves that, you know, it was supposed to, if you know the Bible, if you read it from Revelation on, you know the you know the events that were supposed to take place. There was no, it didn't happen the way that it was supposed to happen. Because the Jews said, we want to take this shit over. That's their home, that's what they wanted to control, and they got it. So, you know, it's, it's you know, I really, I end my case there, you know. I end my case of everything I got to say right there. And I'll leave it up to those who know the research and who have done it. To go fact check that for me. That's all. Uh, any other questions, sis? <laughs> I don't even think we really talked about black love, though. We did. I mean, I, nah, we really didn't. We really didn't. I mean, you know, I see it as, you know, um, it's like, it's possible. I do believe it's possible. I do. I mean, See, I'm an individual that sees it like this, man. For those that will, you know, um, nobody wants to step up and change the mentality. There needs to be a reprogramming of the mind with the black man and the black woman. And that takes several generations of black leaders and black communities and families. And I don't think that, in, in my honest opinion, I don't think that nobody is willing to step up and have their family as the standard of teaching grounds to teach other people that this is how you're supposed to be. Because it comes with several generations, the the mind control that we've been under for, or that they have been under, I, I should say we, because I'm black as well, but um, they've been under for over 400 years. If we really wanted to go back, we could go to the Moors and them having black women as slaves as well. So, the you know, it goes way further back than we think. So... We're dealing with several hundreds of years of indoctrination and twisted mind and just like, you know, just just messed up thinking. So it would take several generations, not just like 10 years. It wouldn't take 20 years, 30. It would take more than that. We would have to get their children, their mothers, you know, their daughters, their granddaughter. We would have to keep teaching them. And I don't think that nobody is willing to step up and, you know, teach several generations. You know, and it's it's sad. It's sad what it's you know headed to, but or where it's at now. You know, but I I wouldn't say give up, but it, it's overall I see it as like something that that just I don't want to I don't want to put the energy out there, even though I just did, you know. <laughs> but you know, um, I, I I do believe it's possible. It is possible. It's a rarity. Black love is a rarity nowadays. I'm talking about the true definition of like unconditionally caring for each other. It is a rarity. There's so many complications that go along now. Material possessions, um, you know, um, um, what amount of income per year and status in the community, things like that. You know, there's so many complications that have people's minds set up on different things. And of course, there's a you know distrust between a black man and a black woman. So. You know, the, the media has, you know, uh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. You got anything to say? You can go and say it. Not really. Okay. I mean, I agree with you. Okay. Well, um, that's crazy. That's crazy. Man. Okay, um... <laughs> Well, this was really thrown together, you know, because I couldn't, um, 
do it yesterday because you didn't respond and you know but it was supposed to drop yesterday you know the podcast drops on fridays now so you know that that's oh what was, yeah but yeah back to saturday i guess you know yeah. so um No, I don't know. You silent, like you, you, you're not saying. I mean, you got me, you know, like not saying nothing, you know. You, you, you did that. You did that. <laughs> I'm breathless. I don't, I don't know what to, you know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. Okay, so those were the only topics. What did you want to say about Nicki Minaj? Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, with her, you know, they put her up to saying she, 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 she just bagged a white guy. You feel me? They had her saying that in the song, so you know, I, I, I laughed at it, you know, because I don't care, like for you know, it's just funny to me. It's just funny as hell. But yeah, you know, after her dating nothing but black men, and for her to come out of nowhere and say she just bagged a white guy, it's funny as fuck. It's funny as hell. It's funny. But yeah, that's all I had to say about Nikki. It was nothing. You know. Did you see the, did you see the video? No, I, I I didn't watch the video. Uh, you know, I didn't want to hear she just bagged the white guy again, so I didn't watch the video. <laughs> I was watching the videos and she looks cra- like I'm really not trying to be like mean or rude, but she looks crazy. Like her body, I feel like I guess she got it redone or whatever, mm-hmm. and. It just looks super cartoonish, and I just, I feel bad that there's so many women who aspire to that, because it looks crazy, like, it yeah. looks crazy. Yeah, a lot of women, she influenced. I was in high school when, the you know, she first came out, and I saw the indoctrination of, you know, the women to try to aspire to be like her, and out of the women that wanted to be like her, what you saw arise, one of the first Nikki clones was Black China. And she was in the Love Them Strippers video in 2012 with 2 Chains and Nicki Minaj standing right next to Nicki Minaj like a clone with the bangs and all that, you know. So, you know, and the fake implants, you feel me? So that influenced uh, the stripper culture, even though Nicki Minaj wasn't a stripper. So we know that Nicki Minaj affected the stripper culture. So who else comes from the stripper culture with, you know, butt implants? Cardi B. You know, so that's the same thing. And who else? K. Michelle. So it's a pattern of things you see now. These women are doing that. Did of, you hear? K. Michelle got her. She got her stuff removed. Yeah, cause it was um I think I, turned hard and like was like rocks or something. It was solid, and she almost died. Okay. Hmm. No, I was just agreeing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, you know, I heard of it. You know, and. That comes from that influence of Nikki. So when Nikki is in her mid thirties, still rapping about this childish stuff, that's why I laughed at it. She just bagged a white guy. Like you in your mid thirties and you still running around here doing all this. Like really? Like you know, it's, it's sad. It's a- it shows the maturity level of the black community to accept that it's not really just her, but Cardi B is even more mentally like a child than Nikki. So you know, it's like you know, th- so like on the adults, like. Mm-hmm. Why are adults promoting this? Like, there are adults who are legitimately fans of Nicki Minaj, who are legitimately fans of Cardi B, like people my mom's age. And it's just like, are you okay? Like, mm-hmm. I can understand why the kids might want to like like her or whatever, but as a grown person, you should, one, not be entertained by this, and two, you shouldn't, you shouldn't present it as acceptable to your kids. Like, yeah. My mom was up there, you know, she went to, I think, a 21 Savage concert. And I was like, really? Really? Mama, really? Like, you over here bumping this trash, dude? And guess what I'm bumping? Mary J. Blige, New Edition, Jodeci. You know what I'm saying? I'm bumping all the music from her times. Like, what are you doing? You feel me? It's crazy. I'm like, you a child, like, mama. I'm the- on my mom, but I remember, like, when the For the D challenge came out. Mm-hmm. Like, thought it was so funny and I was just like mom like are you okay like this isn't 
Like you're no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, hey. And that's just how it is, you know. It's it's the mentality of you know, they know how to entertain us. That's what I talk about with the Jewish, you know, um, empire. They know how to entertain us. They know how to get to us. They know our weaknesses, and that's what I talk about with black people. I see our weaknesses. I see them clear as day. Sexuality, um, emotional, um, you know, just get them emotional and you got them. Just get black people emotional and you got them. Put anything in front of them after you get them emotional, they'll go for it. That, that's, you know, a, a, like a, a psych, psychological thing. So I'm just I'm just seeing that, you know, they operate like children. The majority of the black community operates like children. They got childlike manners. You know, they, they just, it's crazy, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. But um, it was nice talking to you, sis. It was cool and all. You feel me? You were a good guest. You know you. You know what I'm saying. And it it was fun. You know you threw me for a loop, but I think that should be included in the discussion. So we'll let the viewers decide on you know who's right or not. So I you know it ain't about who's right. You know people believe what they want to believe anyway. So, but you know, um, hey um. Goodbye. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was fun. Okay, thank you. Peace. Be safe. You too.